Hi, my name is Vance Powell. I'm here at Nashville, Tennessee, Sputnik Sound, and I'm here with you for PSP Master Tales. Can I curse on this? Because I'm doing it. Sorry for the noshing. I have to eat it. I have to eat. I have to eat something at very specific intervals, so. Because I'm old and fat. With some of your gear you've got back there, you know, some of that is pretty big stuff for people who might not be familiar with it. So what out of your setup do you think would be kind of your desert island pieces of gear that, you know, things you just can't really live without? Um, distressors. Um, that so. Shout out to my, my friend Dave Durr there. Um, 1176s, although I don't use them a lot in mix. I use them more in recording. 33609s, GML compressor, 8900. Uh, PCM42s. Now for years and years and years, uh, and this will be a little bit of a thing, I have been using uh, full tone tube tape echoes for a vocal sound that I just really like. And, and I've used it. And when I say I've been using, I mean, I mean, we're talking like 2006, uh, Jack White has, has two of them between Jack White and I, we, between Jack and I, we have like eight combined. I have four, I have four here now. So now we'd probably have 12, but, but he had five or six of them. We used them all over all the stuff I did with Jack White. I mean, they're all over that. But I got to be honest with you, this year I retired them from my mix. And the reason is that I had a real, I had a real hard time getting good tape. Um, I had some issues with getting them repaired. Um I kept getting them repaired and every time it was almost like I could just buy another one instead of getting it repaired. You know, when I'm spending $400 to replace a thousand dollar piece of gear and I do it twice a year or, or, you know, once every two years or something, it seems kind of crazy. So I started looking for alternatives and uh, as shocking as it may sound, I actually came up on something I like better. And that is the Strymon El Capistan, which is a guitar pedal. Um, it's the same level as the tape echoes. It is a thousand times quieter and I can overdrive them and I can make the tape wiggle like the tapes do. I just crank the wear up. Um, it crank, when you crank the wear up, the top end goes away and it starts wiggling. They do exactly what I want them to do. And uh, so I've actually taken their over there somewhere. They were, I've taken the full tones out of my mix rig. I just got tired of buying tapes. I got tired of sending them back to get them fixed. I had to have a spare one, you know, when I sent them to get fixed because they'd take like three weeks. So I had to have a spare one. Then he sent me a spare one once and then that turned into kind of a little bit of a clusterfuck. And so, yeah, so it's kind of done with all that. But I love them. I still have them. I have tons of tapes and I will use them to make records for sure. I'll plug guitar players into them all day long. They're fantastic. So, um, but that's a two tape echoes. Um, I've got a pair of Bracassi M7s. Those are fantastic. And I've got some really cool springs. I got a great plate. I got a nickel plate three. I've got a, it's a bunch of springs, like a bunch of tape echoes. Uh, that's like, you know, I, I mean, my desert island, you know, the, the funny thing about saying a oh, desert island is uh, we need a generator and we need an artist, you know, some speakers, you know, <laughs> it's kind of like a desert island with a generator. Woo, that's not really, you know, that's like a place to live. Talking about speakers, uh, I've been wondering, you know, what is your monitoring system and how do you do you use headphones? Do you listen to 
uh, you know, one channel sometimes do, do Monify, no. no, and so on. So what's this here? okay, so here's here's the deal. I use ProAct Studio 100s, right? I've been using ProAct Studio 100s for a long time now. I've got three sets. I use Bryston 4Bs as the amps. I also have a one of a kind set of speakers that were built by a guy named Norman Druce, who has now unfortunately passed. Um, they were the prototype of this speaker that he built. They're called atomic reactors. They're the fucking best sounding speakers I've ever heard. Um, and of course they're unobtainable. They, they got parts in them that nobody knows what they are. Norman's past now. So, um, and then I've got NS 10s, you know, I have a Avocet. I have the new one, the Avocet two with the new, uh, quantum card clocking and all that. Um, I come out of my SSL, I just turn the SSL monitor pod all the way up, and then that goes into the Avocet. So the Avocet's my controller, a monitor controller. Um, that means I can also um, record, I can use the Avocet as a digital input, obviously. So if I do mix something in the box, I can listen digitally to the Avocet because I've got it hooked up to AES. Um, or um, I do a lot of stuff with UA. So I've been using Luna and Apollos and I've got one of those hooked up to the, to the Avocet. So I can, I can do that from my laptop or from here, uh, either one. I mean, sometimes I'm working on my laptop on Luna and then I'm working on project and pro tools here and I can just listen between them, you know. Um, I've got a set of Focal Listen Clears, which are the best sounding headphones I've ever heard. Um, and I've got a set of Grados. Uh, Grados are over there probably see them and the focals are back here uh both open back you know open back headphones very nice sound great the focals are unbelievable they really are unbelievable i've had to track a couple records with the focals like in the room with the band and uh it worked so but i and and listen i listen in mono all the time my console has a mono button so I listen to mono all the time, you know, what's going on. Um, but I don't listen just one ear. I don't do any of that. Monoral recording. How would you make a decision if you want to buy some equipment? I would love to say that my decision making on buying equipment is well thought out. Um, but normally what my my goal here when I buy something is it has to do something. It absolutely positively has to do something that nothing else will. Right. It has to do something that, 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 that there's not, there's no other piece of gear that will do it. So like, like I'm never going to buy um, an obvious knockoff new clone of something. Now, that being said, microphones are a little different. Uh, I have found some really amazing clones of, of some great microphones. John Peluso is building some really amazing microphones. I have a pair of his 2247s, the LEs with the EF12 tube, the metal tube, and they are fantastic. Now, I also have a 47, so, you know. I know what a 47 sounds like because I have one. I would put them up against it any day. I mean, they're really great. Um, do they have any long-term value? No. I mean, you're going to pay $2,500 for them. They're going to be worth $2,500 in 10 years, probably. The 47, um, you know, I paid nine grand for it at some point in time. It's going to be worth 20 grand in five years. So... Yes, it has value. I have a pair back here of 1176s, uh, right back there. They're, you know, 1176Es. I remember paying $1,500 a piece for them. Now they're worth easily three grand or more a piece. So, so I do buy things based on, on appreciation at some point, because basically in this business, you know, there's, there's not a lot of really great retirement plans. Um, your retirement plan is you try to save but if you own a studio, I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, trying to save, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a joy. So it's partially um, an investment too. Yeah, it's an investment. You have to kind of, I mean, at some point, I hope 
that when I decide to retire, some idiot, I mean, some really smart person decides to just buy all this stuff from me. That'd be great. Because you're giving them such a great deal, right? Yeah, like, (laughs) yeah, they'd be like, oh, there's so much mojo in it, blah, 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 you know, and of course, none of this gear has anything to do with um, someone's sound, you know, it's all, it's all here. So, Um, but, but, you know, I'm an, I'm an old school, I'm a throwback. I mean, um, there's an SSL console right here, you know, that's an SSL 6000. Um, I'm mixing on the console. That's how I work. I use all of that back here, either for recording or mixing. Uh, some of it is just, some of it I don't use at all for recording. Some of it I use only for mixing. So, and some of it I, I use only for recording. My console has no mic pre's. This is a film console, so it's all line inputs. Uh, so all my mic pre's are outboard. They're all kind of over in here and a bunch of neves up there that you can't really see there somewhere and some rcas and things like that so um you know it's it's a it's a kind of a 50 50 you know half of it's mix half of it's record well yeah, that's not really true it's mostly mix and then a good part record <laughs> Well, thanks for having me here at PSP Master Tales. Uh, if you need to get a hold of me for any reason, you can reach me at either my management website, which is globalpositioningservices.com, or you can email me at vance at vancepal.com. Thanks for having me and uh, look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you. Thank you. It Got was it. an honor. Yeah, that yeah. was awesome. It was a pleasure to do it. Uh, you guys keep up the good work there. I'm going to go eat.